San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It's Wednesday, January 29th. Thank you so much for being with us this morning, everybody. Hopefully you got to stay warm and have a hot cup of coffee. It's nice and chilly outside this it, morning. It is. It's really I stepped out in the front yard between newscasts and uh, it's downright chilly. Do You see what I have on my calendar for this morning? Order wings. Order wings. Yes. I and that's not sure. for today. That's to order wings for Super, Super Bowl, Bowl Sunday. Sunday. That's right. We have an article on KSAT.com. From burritos to booze, here's what locals ordered the most during last year's Super Bowl. Well, how, according to Postmates, um, we took home the most spirited crown. We spent the most money per order on alcohol during last year's big game. Of any other U.S. city, people. That, um, they like to imbibe, apparently, around here. Yeah. So they also found that um, San Antonians ordered more than 600 dozens of donuts from Dunkin' Donuts. That sure Let's did. talk about the food. Yeah, so here's the most popular food items ordered on Postmates Super Bowl last year. We're going to run through the top three, not only on Postmates, but on Favor. And also DoorDash. on DoorDash, yeah. which I love DoorDash. I do too. Boy, they're my best friend. All right, so um, Postmarks, Postmates, sorry. Build your own plate from Panda Express, number one. Number two is the chicken burrito bowl from Chipotle. Number three is the Caniac combo from oh, Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers. Love their chicken. God, that's awesome. Favor the top three things ordered uh, Super Bowl. Number one was beer and wine from H-E-B. How about that? Burgers from Whataburger. Wings from Hooters. And then we go to DoorDash. Their top three items, burrito. Uh, cheeseburger and fries. And buffalo wings. Yes, buffalo wings. Yes. So that's uh, an idea. Again, though, most alcohol delivered mm -hmm. by food delivery service of any city in the country, San Antonio, Texas, last Cheers year. Cheers to you, my <laughs> friends. Let's take a look at your rundown. <laughs> Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and the GOP senators met behind closed doors after President Trump's legal team ended their opening arguments. In the meantime, Democrats continue to push former National Security Advisor John Bolton to appear under oath. Major development in the Kobe Bryant helicopter crash investigation. A new recording has surfaced that appears to capture the moment of the crash. It comes as investigators reveal new clues about what went wrong. The Pentagon reports 50 military personnel are suffering from traumatic brain injuries following Iran's retaliation missile attack on U.S. forces. According to a Pentagon statement, 32 of those service members are back on duty after treatment. A teacher at a Florida daycare has been fired for using a marker to write on a toddler. The boy's mother says her one-year-old son came home with this message scrawled across his torso. A charter airliner with hundreds of Americans who evacuated from China has now landed here in the U.S. Travelers will be rescreened for the coronavirus and hospitals prepared to treat those who may be infected. The Texas Historical Commission asking for more time to review the city's request to move the cenotaph. The monument sits at the Alamo, previously approved to be relocated a few hundred feet away. Vermont may soon allow drivers to include emojis on their license plates. A bill in the state legislature would let drivers pay extra and choose from one of six emojis. But the bill doesn't say which six. DiGiorno is making a bet the Super Bowl Sunday. The frozen pizza the brand says if at any point in the game the score is 3 to 14 or 14 to 3, DiGiorno will give you free pizza. If you can't get enough Lucky Charms in Cinnamon Toast Crunch in the morning, here is a new option. You could have them for dessert as ice cream. A very shocking discovery inside a couch in Kansas. The owners found a seven foot boa constrictor in the cushion. And they say it could have been in the couch for weeks or even months. <laughs> I'd be moving. I would. I would move. Our producer, I, just, I would just move. Our producer Oriana just said, "Burn down the whole house." Mm -hmm. You just don't want to deal with it, Oriana. No. Anything like that? Yeah. No, I don't blame. So you. there's, you know, you find all sorts of stuff in the couch. I don't mind finding, you know, change, a quarter change. You don't want to find snacks, a boa constrictor. Couch pizza. No. That kind no. of thing. You Sofa pizza. Yeah. The, remember the Hangover? Yeah, but Alan. I didn't think you would actually have sofa pizza. Uh, not me. No. Probably. That's not your personality. Probably, no. You're. You're absolutely right about that. Yeah. He's, very neat. Let's take a look outside with live cam. Uh, how would you feel about finding a boa constrictor in your couch? Well, I have questions naturally. Uh, the boa constrictor, they're not natural to Kansas. So my question is, how did it get there? Was it? They're thinking it must have been a pet of somebody's, um, maybe nearby, and it escaped and ended up in their house window? and then in their couch. That's awful. And it could Absolutely. have been there for a long, long time. They said. Oof. No. Eating good. the couch pizza. <laughs> Couch pizza, too. Uh, <laughs> outside right now, we've got uh, 47 degrees. It's a chilly morning. We've got some gusty winds, so it feels a little bit chillier than that. 
the wind chills will stick around for another hour or so, and then we're going to warm up pretty significantly this afternoon. And right now, dew point is at 34. We do still have a pretty stout north northwesterly wind at about 16 miles per hour. So there you see it, the wind chill is down to 40 here in town. And the wind chills around the area generally in the 40s and even 30s, 33 Kerrville is what it feels like, 32 in Fredericksburg, 44 your current wind chill in Del Rio. Pollen count shows mountain cedar has jumped back up into the high category. I suppose that's not a big surprise because we got the northwesterly winds yesterday. Mold, though, also high at 1300. We've got a little bit of ash out there. Forecast for today, lots of sun, still some breezy winds. Winds will calm a little bit this afternoon and tonight up to 65. But tomorrow, much different. Cloudy, a chance of rain and cooler. We'll talk about that coming up in just a few minutes. Guys. Despite a relatively uh, clear morning out there weather wise, we've had an eventful morning commute. Heavy traffic inbound there at 10 where the split comes back together. 10 and Frio. Some sunshine coming right at your lens. Well, top stories that we're following for you today. We're still waiting to learn the name of a 76 year old woman who was beaten to death according to police by her son overnight. Yes, uh, police say the uh, Balcones Heights police rather are still looking for the suspect identified as 55 year old Michael Wayne Kerbo. And police say the incident began around seven last night at the Spanish Key Apartments in the 1100 block of Babcock, not far from Hillcrest and 410. Officers received a call from the woman asking them to help her kick her son out of the apartment after they got into an argument. When officers arrived, Kerbo had already left. Police say around 11 p.m. they received another call, this time from a friend of Kerbo, requesting a welfare check on the woman. Officers arrived and found the victim badly beaten. She was pronounced dead at the scene. This morning, San Antonio police asking for your help locating a missing 82-year-old woman. She was last seen in the 12,500 block of Paloma Trail, which is on the northwest side. So take a look at this picture, everybody. They are looking for Rita Brown. She has gray hair and brown eyes, typically wears her hair in a ponytail. Brown was last seen driving her white 2019 Buick Encore license plate LWN7486. If you know where she is, call the SAPD Missing Persons Unit 207-7660. And this morning, the San Antonio River Authority will be doing a prescribed burn along the Mich Mission Reef section of the San Antonio River Walk. Closures along the trail will be in effect during the day, and staff will be redirecting people in the area. Here are a look at five areas scheduled for the burn. It's in conjunction with the San Antonio Fire Department, Bear County, and the National Park Service. For more information and a closer look at this map, go to ksat.com. In your morning headlines, President Trump is putting pen to paper for historic signing today. The Caribbean people still shaking after an earthquake as well. And a man holding on to a car for dear life. Another rescue caught on body cam. David Sears joined us live in the studio. We've Hi, been David. taking care of, uh, we've been taking, uh, uh, what was, I don't know what else. What are you saying? Something about the Caribbean? No, something about body cams. Oh, yeah, yeah. Taking we advantage of the body cam. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Been in the news a lot in the last couple of years, hasn't it? Yeah. It's early. All right, good. <laughs> Thanks for that excuse. Hey, <laughs> a big political achievement for the president and for many workers here in the United States. Today, the president will sign the new USMCA trade agreement. It replaces NAFTA, the trade agreement that has been in effect for the last 25 years. The new agreement designed to be helping more American auto industry workers and help improve labor standards. It will also help the American farmer, among other things. President Trump will sign the new agreement during a White House ceremony. It'll be attended by members of Congress, along with farmers and auto workers. And since this is happening in the middle of the impeachment hearings, there will not be any Democrats invited to the ceremony. Mexico has already ratified the agreement. Canada expected to ratify it in a couple of weeks. The Caribbean islands not so calm for residents and visitors. The video shows what happens when a 7.7 .7 earthquake hits that area. People scramble to get out of buildings and get to the street. School children evacuated from their classrooms. Shelves coming down inside stores. Waves created in outdoor pools. There was a tsunami threat for a couple of hours. There was also some damage, but so far doesn't appear to be major and there are no reports of injuries. The quake felt 400 miles away in Miami, home of the Super Bowl this weekend, but so far no problems there either. Video of the day. Hold on for this one. Literally, we are in a parking lot in Houston next to a food truck, a little fender bender. Guy in the red car is an Uber Eats driver who stopped to get tacos out of that taco truck right there gets out of the red car and starts to walk around the gray car that just hit him he wanted a picture of the car and then the driver just takes off the guy ends up on the hood and he's holding on for dear life you can see in this surveillance video get on the hood and then watches it heads down the street 
He ended up falling off that car about a block away. He is in critical condition. A convenience store owner saw it all. So they got a little argument. They don't want to give it to the insurance information to each other. And he's tried to run away or something. The victim is Masin Jihani. Uber tried to reach out to him. The police are still looking for the driver of that gray car. And finally, you're looking at a woman who fell off a dock into an icy Lake Michigan. The water temperature, 36 degrees. Now, this is police body cam video again. Apparently, her friend and two other fishermen couldn't get her out of there. They called 911. By the time first responders got there, she'd been in the water for about 15 minutes. Her body completely numb. But as you see, they were able to pull her out and get her on the dock and warm her up. And she's okay. Well, what the wow. heck? I don't know if you caught any fish or not, though. <laughs> David. Help you. David. <laughs> that video, though, of the guy holding on to the that, car, that's very that? disturbing. Well, that is incredible. And I'm disturbing. sure police will tell you don't do that. Don't, just no. Let him go. Walk away. We'll find him later. Just take a picture so. of the car. It's just and a bring little it to fender bender, too. Yeah. Well, like something major. Things escalate quickly. Yeah. David, thank you. Thanks, David. 909, 47 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. It's an optical illusion meant to slow down drivers. How a 3D crosswalk in Windcrest has people doing a double take. Trial for the so-called medical center rapist continues this week right here in Bear County. Paul Venom and court as prosecutors show the jury some of the evidence in that case. He joins us for our weekly court debrief later in this newscast. He came in once to donate blood with his co-workers and he was hooked ever since. It's Blood Donor Month and this faithful donor has been donating for the last 25 years here at University Hospital. How much he's donated and why he continues to do it this morning on GMSA at 9. And checking the stock market, it is in positive territory, not up much, but 37 points at 28,760. Welcome back. It is 13 minutes after 9. Encouraged by his friends, one San Antonio man accepted the call to donate blood years ago. One visit turned into two and then three. And before he knew, he was celebrating 25 years of helping save lives through the donation of whole blood. Alicia Barrera visited University Hospital to meet David Paul, a top donor with a lot more left to give. David Paul works at University Hospital and could probably make his way to the donor room with his eyes closed if he tried. When I started, it was whole blood so it was every eight weeks or so um, and then uh, I did that for probably 10 or 15 years. He's made a total of 127 trips to the same room since 1995. Some friends, some co-workers uh, on the unit that I worked in um, were going to uh, come down and donate and, and I thought it would be a nice opportunity to contribute. Some visits are to donate platelets and others to donate whole blood, which according to University Hospital records has added up to 30 gallons. Actually, I didn't even realize until they, they had told me how much it was, but it, 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 once you get started um, and you get a routine with it, um, then it just flows and, and it feels good. He says it's a simple yet efficient way to give back. And the best thing is you, you're able to give something, give something to the community, especially when there's a need, extreme need right now. So it always helps and it feels good to be able to do that. Through the years, platelet donations have become David's go-to. And he says his goal for 2020 is to visit University Hospital's donor room at least 20 more times. Well, every two seconds, someone in the U.S. needs a blood transfusion. And just this year here in South Texas, according to University Health System, the South Texas is experiencing a blood shortage. So that's why it's so important to donate regularly, just as this donor has for the past 25 years. So you can head down here today. I'm at the Southwest Clinic. The address for that is 2020, 2121 Southwest 36th Street. And you can also head over um, to University Hospital. They're open Monday. Monday through Friday. So again, today's clinic, today's blood drive is happening until 3 p.m. The other option, you can head over to University Hospital. Their hours vary Monday through Friday, but today they will be open until 7 p.m. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News.
Alicia, thank you. So cool to meet David Paul and hear his story. Remarkable story of giving. Very inspirational. Guy has a heart, doesn't he? he? Sure does. And she had a coat on and she needed it. She looks cold. <laughs> she looks cold. It, it is brisk out there it's again. The wind, you know, yeah. it really, it really it takes it to you. And we're, we're going to see the wind lighten up a little bit this afternoon, but it is cold out there right now. 40s. We're at 47 degrees. We're starting that warming up process and we should be in the 60s by this afternoon. Let's talk real quick about Mountain Cedar because it jumped up again today. We thought we were kind of losing it a little bit here. It was kind of on its last leg, but uh, it's not surprising, I suppose, with the northwesterly wind yesterday and the lower dew points that we saw it jump back up. Now, I know this doesn't look all that bad, uh, but we have been in the high category several times last uh, oh, two weeks or so, and it looks like we may be there today and tomorrow. So just keep that in mind. Look at the peak wind gusts from yesterday. 33 miles per hour here in San Antonio. We gusted to 41 Rock Springs, 43 in Del Rio. Yes, it's still breezy out there, but not near as strong as it was yesterday afternoon. Uh, time lapse shows a beautiful sunrise. We have uh, clear skies to deal with this morning. 47 degrees, north northwesterly winds at about 16. So yes, it is uh, still fairly breezy out there. And the winds are strongest now across our eastern counties. Yesterday it was out west. Now that wind's sort of transitioning east. but. Uh, still seeing winds anywhere from 10 to 20 miles per hour across our eastern counties. And that is contributing to a wind chill. So it feels like 40 here in town when you factor in the wind. feels like 42 in New Braunfels. feels like 33 in Kerrville. So that's more January-like. We haven't seen much of this this month, uh, but starting to feel a little more like it today. Uh, a forecast high temperature 65 here in town, 66 Pleasanton. We'll see some lower 60s off to the north with sunny skies. Here's the setup. We're in between systems right now, so we've got one that is moving through Arkansas. That is the one that moved through uh, yesterday, brought some of the showers and storms with it. And then we have one back off to the west. This is going to move in tomorrow, and there's not a lot of moisture for this to work with. So it's going to be mostly cloud cover that I think we're dealing with tomorrow. But there could be some drizzle, could be a wet commute tomorrow morning. We could see a wet evening commute, too, if that the drizzle does persist. Uh, but right now we're looking at cloudless skies for much of South Texas. So here's what the future cast looks like. Uh, we go sunny all the way through 6 o'clock, and then very quickly, clouds start to shift in. So by tomorrow morning, we're cloudy. There could be some drizzle out there, and I think we could see a couple of light showers, too. The models are hinting at that. It's not going to be much rain. It's not going to add up to much. Uh, and as we get into later in the day, still cloudy. And then by Friday morning, we're still seeing clouds, but a lot of the rain starts to go away. And then by Saturday and Sunday, we're back to seeing some sun and warmer temperatures. 65 degrees, the high temperature, breezy, northwesterly winds 10 to 15 today. And then tomorrow, 52, that's it. This system's going to draw in some cooler air with the clouds. Just won't warm up much. 58 Friday, 67 Saturday. Sunday is Groundhog Day. I forgot about that. <laughs> wow. To add it to the seven-day forecast. Uh, and then a slight chance of some showers Monday. I will tell you, you see there on Tuesday, we're at 78. Looking down the line with some of the models, there actually could be some colder air next week. Okay. Stay tuned. We'll see. Thank you, Justin. You got it. Still ahead on DMSA and I an optical illusion making drivers outside Windcrest Elementary take a good long look at the crosswalk. How school officials hope the 3D crosswalk will get drivers to slow down. Have you seen this yet? It's an optical illusion meant to slow drivers down. City Windcrest has put up what they're calling a 3D crosswalk. It's cool. It's the first of its kind in Texas. Patty Santos shows us this unique case of crosswalk creativity. Look closely and see what's making drivers outside Windcrest Elementary School take a good long look at the crosswalk ahead. Now that is my favorite thing. Oh, uh, shock. Yeah, definitely shock. It kind of looks like an optical illusion because of, like it's messing with your head, like which kind of shape it is. It's like like 3D shape. The three-dimensional floating crosswalk appeared just over a month ago. The idea is to, to get traffic to slow down, to kind of catch their eye. Ron Lemos, the contractor who made it, says the city wanted to try out something new. He gave it a shot. I want it to feel as if it's as, as a crosswalk that's floating and it's got a shade underneath. So that way it kind of gives their perspective to kind of slow down. It gives them more time to, to be able to recognize who's around. Looking into it, he says 3D crosswalks have 
been used in cities around the world and the U.S., but he didn't see anything about Texas. This is a preliminary shot that we're doing here, so I think it's it's, it's something that we, we want to, they want to do more. There's been talks. It's just another tool that we're trying to use, uh, aside from the, the signs, and at times we have the crossing guards here still, and, and uh, just something else to get their attention. You have to get the view from the right angle, and once you do, you'll see the fun floating effect. It actually does, so that creeps me out a bit, but I I faced I face my fears whenever I cross it. As do other bigger kids. Patty Santos case at 12 News. She goes. <laughs> Great job, Patty. The city says they're exploring the possibility of adding more of these 3D crosswalks around the school. The contractor says the price for the crosswalk is a little more than the average crosswalk because the extra time and paint that it takes to make it. But it is cool. It's a great idea. More ahead on GMSA at 9. The Super Bowl only four days away from food to the field. How thousands of people are working hard to get the stadium ready for the big game. Kansas City Chiefs superfan putting it all other football fans to shame how he's proving to be the biggest Chiefs fan out there ever. Prosecutors presenting evidence against the so-called medical center rapist as his trial continues. Paul Venema is here to debrief some of the things police found inside the suspect's apartment coming up next. If you have somewhere to be, this is what you're going to encounter as you get closer to town on I-10 at Frio. Heavy traffic there trying to get on to 35 northbound. Welcome back. Your time now, 928. It's what prosecutors say was a critical piece of evidence, a gold watch, and it was found by detectives during a search of the apartment of Anton Harris. He is on trial accused of being the so-called medical center rapist. Paul Venema was in court for testimony of Harris's basketball coach who gave police a big break in the rape cases. He was shown this picture taken from a gas station security camera near the apartment complex where a woman had been raped. When I first saw the picture, I looked at the face and I thought it, it looked uh, like Anton. And when I scanned the rest of the picture and saw his legs because uh, he's wearing shorts, um, I, I knew it was Anton at that time. With that identification, detectives obtained a warrant and searched an apartment that Harry shared with his family in the medical center area. And Paul joins us now for our weekly court debrief. Paul, good morning to you. Good morning. This trial in its second week now, is the end in sight at all? It is, finally. It looks as though we probably will uh, get to closing arguments on the guilt-innocence phase of the uh, case, probably today, perhaps by noon. Well, you mentioned two weeks, so it's been quite a long trial. Yeah. Does the jury seem to still be engaged well, in it? Because of the nature of the case, for the most part, they are. There, there's, of course, in a case like this, there's a lot of technical testimonies, and that'll slow things down. But for the most part, because of the salacious nature of the case, I get, mm -hmm. uh, the jury seems to, to really be engaged in it. And you're right, in spite of the case, because sometimes you'll find a jury uh, zoning off on cases when they become kind of lengthy. But in this case, they seem very attentive. Paul, do you agree yesterday was critical for the uh, prosecution, uh, finding the watch, yeah. finding weapons in the apartment? Yeah, well, this is, this, like most cases, it's a matter of connecting the dots. And this what was, was the, the watch connection again? It was, it was the, the woman for whom he, he's accused of raping right now. Her watch was stolen, dirt, stolen during that. And she described the watch, and a watch fitting that description was found in his apartment. So it, because he's on trial, although he's accused in five cases, he's on trial for only one right now. And in that case, it was this woman whose watch was stolen. The watch is found in his apartment. That's pretty significant. That coupled with the fact that in all these cases, each woman reported that either a knife or a gun was used in, in their attacks. So then they find knives and guns. Uh, all of them said that, uh, that he uh, uh, wore a, a, a gray hoodie and that was found in his apartment. So it's, it's all, of course, circumstantial evidence, as most cases are like this. Was there DNA evidence? There has been DNA ed of evidence, too, and the evidence does not exclude him. So it's, it's, it's good DNA evidence as far as far as uh, that is concerned. That part of the, the trial was the, where I said things bogged down, we get down with the clinical stuff with DNA. But yeah, they had DNA, DNA as well. But this, this evidence that they found in his apartment is, in my opinion, where I am the jury, I would find it very significant. Plea bargain of 40 years in the case rejected by the judge last summer. How mm -hmm. significant will that become uh, should Harris be convicted? Well, uh, it was a 40-year sentence. So 
that, uh, if, if you will, the defense has to uh, come in under that to consider, their, if you will, a victory, if you call it a victory. The prosecution, on the other hand, uh, should come above that 40 years uh, should there be a conviction. So that, that number is kind of the number that both sides are keeping an eye on, just in terms of whether or not they've, they've uh, done a good job on, on their side of the case, whether it's defending it or, or, or prosecuting it. Who's going to decide if he's convicted? Is it the jury or the judge? Yeah, it's, it's, it's the, the jury. Yeah, it's, uh, he will, well, it'll be up to the jury to decide whether or not he's convicted, of course, mm -hmm. and then punishment will be up to the jury as well. He's elected to go to the jury for punishment. So we get a conviction, we'll go straight into the punishment phase, and at that point, we should get a little bit more insight into Anton Harris that I anticipate uh, his attorneys will bring in witnesses to uh, uh, mitigating uh, witnesses, I would guess. Will he face future trials for the other? Well, those cases are out there. He's been indicted on uh, four others, and those cases stay there. Those indictments remain in place. And should something go wrong with this, uh, with this case, for instance, the state always has the opportunity to try them on any one of those. But no, they, they don't go away. They, they, the indictments stay in place forever. For more on Paul's coverage, we always point you towards KSAT.com. We also yeah. want to point you to the KSAT uh, TV app, where Paul has put together a chronology yeah. of this high-profile case. It's out there for you to check it out. Just go to Apple TV, Amazon Fire Stick, uh, Roku, that kind of thing. Good. Good. Thanks, Paul. Thanks. Always Thank you. a pleasure to have you. Right. Let's go outside with live cam on a chilly start to your Wednesday morning, Justin Horn. It is chilly out there and breezy. We're seeing some gusty winds out of the northwest. Of course, they were strong yesterday. They've let up just a little bit today, but there's still a wind chill out there. So uh, wind chill values right now are in the 40s and 30s. It's jacket weather, no doubt. Let's take a look at the numbers. 47 at the airport, 43 comfort, 46 in Tarpley. Uh, you may be able to lose a coat later this afternoon. We do think temperatures will rebound into the mid 60s, but there's a look at the wind chills and that sure feels like temperature down to 34 in Kerrville. Feels like 42 right now in New Braunfels. So today, sunny, breezy and mild. Tomorrow, clouds return. I think they'll be back overnight and by tomorrow morning, we're going cloudy. There could be some drizzle. It will also be much cooler tomorrow. Temperatures may not make it out of the low 50s, but we rebound again by the weekend. More sun and warmer temperatures both Saturday and Sunday. Here's today's forecast. 57 by noontime, 65 for high sunny. Northwest chilly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour and gusty. We'll talk more about this next storm system and look ahead to the weekend. Give you the details there too, coming up in just a couple minutes. Guys. Let's go back to trans guys, see how things are looking. We still got huge stacking. Uh, I-10, this is I-10 eastbound at Frio as you're heading towards the 35 north uh, curve there very close to the fine silver building coming into the downtown area. Don't know what's causing the backup, but uh, we could show you also we've got heavy traffic out there. That's that never ending construction zone. That's at I-10 and Dominion uh, near Bernie Stage Road. All right, let's check in with our friends at Chatter. Hello everyone, this is your daily tech and business briefing from Chatter. Match Group CEO Mandy Ginsburg has stepped down at the leadership change comes as the dating app company prepares for its spin-off as an independent public company. Match is promoting their current president, Char Duby, to be their new CEO. She's going to assume her role on March the 1st. Well, United Airlines says they're canceling dozens of flights to China, all as demand declines on the coronavirus fears. The CDC has recommended that travelers avoid non-essential travel to China, all while President Trump has announced plans to expand screenings at 20 U.S. airports. The coronavirus death toll in China has climbed to 132 people. And Ford is recalling its F-150 pickup truck in Canada due to a problem with its electric tailgate latch. Now, the glitch could cause the tailgate to open on unexpectedly, potentially allowing unsecured cargo to fall out. The recall will affect nearly 90,000 of their vehicles, but will not affect any of its identical U.S. trucks. And that's your Chatter Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Grab a pen and paper if you are a hopeless romantic or open up the notes on your phone so you can make a little note here. You could get special postage for that Valentine's Day card from Valentine, Texas. That's right. Talk about town names there, Justin Horn. Here's one to look into. That's when you should, actually. We have no idea what the background is on Valentine, Texas. No, we don't, but we do know that the post office is offering a special Valentine's Day postmark 
to put on your loved one's card. So they debuted the Made of Hearts Forever stamp as part of the USPS Love Series. This year's custom most postmarked is drawn by Eric Ramirez, a student of the Valentine Independent School District. So the practice of sending cards with a Valentine pictorial postmark goes back actually more than 30 years. They said requests for the pictorial postmark come from all over the United States, even several countries from around the world. Keep going. I'm looking up where Valentine, Texas is. Okay, good. If you'd like to sp send a special card to someone with the pictorial postmark, you address the card to the person you are sending it to, add a first-class mail postage stamp to the envelope, and put it into a large envelope with appropriate postage. Then you can use the Made of Hearts Forever stamp on the envelope that will contain the pictorial postmark. All right, address the larger envelope to the following address. We have it on your screen. Thank you, Oriana. Valentine's Day postmark, Postmaster, 311 West California Avenue, Valentine, Texas, 79854-9998, or just put 79854, you're fine. Valentine, by the way, out there by Marfa in West Texas. Oh, okay, here's the thing. You have to send it by February 7th to make sure the greeting cards with the special postmark are delivered in time for Valentine's Day, and there is a limit. 50 postmarks. Five cents will be charged for each additional postmark after you exceed the first 50. Yeah, it's out there west of Fort Stockton, kind of between Martha and Van Horn. And the Postal Service says there's no charge to customers who request up to 50, but then it's five cents for each but one. But you, you, to do this, you've got to really want that postmark. I mean, yeah. it's pretty elaborate. So. so I'm trying to understand. You, you put an envelope with a postmark on it inside a larger envelope with a postmark on it and then they're going to mail you back inside your envelope that's inside the envelope the stamps i think that sounds about right yeah. it hurts a little bit to think about it it does i'm going to blame the fact that i was on google maps okay. <laughs> i was kind of i think half, i got that right listening. you put a you address the, the outer envelope to the postmark, the um, post office, uh -huh. enter envelope to yourself with a stamp, and they will put the stamps inside the inner envelope and mail it to you. If you've got it, good for you. I'm going to do some homework, and I'll do some reading up on it, and I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that's the case. All right, let's okay. move on. It's 938 now, 47 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. Uh, big game almost here. The Chiefs Niners facing off in this year's Super Bowl, a glimpse of the final preparations inside Miami's Hard Rock Stadium. Coming up next. So yes, Leslie was right. No, I was actually I wasn't right. Okay. I wasn't. So okay. let's make sure. So the Valentine Texas thing. Yeah. So you address your envelope to whoever you want to send it to, put postage on it. Then you put that in a larger envelope, mail that to Valentine Texas. They pull your already stamped already stamped hard. envelope. They run through their postmark machine and send it on its way to your loved one wherever. Yeah, so they don't send you the the stamp market. They stamp it for they you. They stamp it, it, send it on its way. So it's a little simpler. But it definitely requires a little, a little process. effort and mm -hmm. twice the postage. Okay, Super Bowl 54 is just four days away. The Kansas City Chiefs and San Francisco 49ers already in Miami getting ready for the big game. Gina Benitez from WSNV in Miami visited the Hard Rock Stadium to get a glimpse of the final preps before Sunday's game. The stage is set for the biggest night in football. Final preparations being made for Super Bowl Sunday. You have things going on on every level of the field. From the field to the food, thousands at Hard Rock Stadium are hard at work. We have you know, over 6,000 workers that have been working um, consistently over the last few weeks. That includes Ed Mangan, the Super Bowl field director. A brand new field, which is standard, put in for the big game. We've got to obviously paint it, we've got to mow it, we've got to care for it. Uh, you know, it lives, it breathes all day long. Now, because of the angle of the sun, there isn't a whole lot of sunlight hitting the field, so they're using these grow lights to help supplement the sunlight. This is a really the first year that we've done with uh, grow lights. Uh, you know, luckily they had those here for in years past that uh, they haven't used in, in a while, but uh, we were able to uh, get them back into operation. And the field, not the only thing getting a lot of TLC. A whole team of chefs brought in to cook up some good grub for the fans. They're coming here to support the efforts of our amazing on-site dynamic team. From concession levels to premium and club levels, there's a little bit of everything for every palate. As far as the game goes, some special stuff in store for the NFL's 100th season. It's going to be extra special in terms of added uh, moments in the pregame show and other things that are going to be happening uh, that you know are, are just going to make the Super Bowl you know that much more special than than it always is. That was WSNV's Gina Benitez reporting from Miami. So check this out.
You could call this man a Kansas City Chiefs super fan. Trevor Lane has an entire room in his house filled with Chiefs memorabilia. It's a collection that started a decade ago. The room now filled with bags, flags, posters, pizza boxes, plates, tickets, a baby's bib, even scratch-off tickets. Lane says he keeps everything Kansas City, even stuff he finds in the trash. His favorite item, a Jamal Charles rookie card, the running back signed during training camp in 2013. 70 out of 75 made. He signed it right in front of me. It was pretty cool. Lane says he, when he runs out of room on the walls, he's going to start putting memorabilia on his ceiling. That's a true fan. Indeed. Mm. Who do you think he's pulling for in the Super Bowl? No uh, clue. Probably <laughs> Niners. Tough call. Justin joins us now. And quick side note on our trivia for uh, Valentine, Texas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I believe, uh, if, if memory serves, that Valentine is home to the largest earthquake that Texas has ever seen. Wow. Like, actually did some damage there. And you said it's, it's like literally in the middle of... Nowhere. Nowhere. I mean, it's a long... It's, yeah, and there's probably a, a nowhere drive. Texas, too, right? Probably so. Yeah. Yeah, we need to do a little more research. A claim could be made for Nacogdoches, but that's another story. That's a whole other story. A whole <laughs> other story. Well, you guys were talking about the Super Bowl. I know a lot of folks have plans Sunday, so we're going to do a little throwback graphic here. For the Super Bowl forecast, yeah, most of us will be indoors, but uh, if you happen to be outdoors, here's what the forecast looks like. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, mostly cloudy conditions and temperatures right around 70 degrees. That's a throwback, by the way, the Tecmo Super Bowl. You remember that on, on Nintendo? Very oh, yeah. cool. It was awesome. Anyway, I digress. Well, let's go outside for you. we got blue skies. It is really nice right now, just a little bit on the chilly side. 47 degrees, dew point is at 34. North northwesterly winds at about 16. And we do have a wind chill because we have those breezy winds. Feels like 40 as you step outside this morning. Winds are starting to pick up again. They died down a little bit this morning. Uh, right now, gusting to 23, 21 in Kerrville. These numbers are not as high as they were yesterday. So we're not seeing the gusts 30 to 40, but we could see a few gusts up around 25 this morning. I do think these winds will calm a little bit once we get into the afternoon. In the meantime, though, you will have to deal with that wind chill. Feels like 42 in New Braunfels with an air temperature of 48. 43 in Rock Springs, but feels like 37. Uh, it does feel like it's in the mid 40s area around Uvalde as well. Visible satellite picture. We've got clear skies for most of us, but notice this cloud deck right on the edge of our viewing area. It's slowly moving off to the west. These clouds will eventually work their way in tomorrow. We'll see an increase in cloud cover anyway, and uh, the, the clouds will thicken up. We may see some drizzle tomorrow morning, and tomorrow's going to be a very different day in the sense that it will likely be cloudy most of the day, and it could be a little bit wet from time to time. But you see all the clouds gathering across northeast Texas and then the western half of the state is basically clear at this point. Here's our next storm system gathering strength over Arizona. There's not much to it yet. It hasn't tapped into moisture yet. It's really not going to have a whole lot to work with even once it gets here, but it will bring the clouds with it. It will bring that outside chance of some drizzle, maybe a shower or two. There it is on water vapor. We can see it pretty clearly, and this is going to dive down into Texas coming up tomorrow. So here's what the future cast is showing. Clear skies this afternoon, but very quickly by tomorrow morning, clouds fill in. We could see a couple of showers, maybe some drizzle, and that will continue through the day. I can't rule out some breaks in the clouds out west, uh, but for the most part, it's going to be a cloudy day. And then as we get into Friday morning, most of the rain goes away, but clouds are going to stick around for a while on Friday. And we'll still get some clouds over the weekend too, but temperatures are going to warm up. And we'll see some pretty warm temperatures by Sunday, as we showed you for the Super Bowl Sunday and even into next week. So 65 degrees today, breezy northwesterly winds 10 to 15. T tomorrow we'll go 52. That's it. 30% chance of showers, maybe some drizzle, cloudy skies. 58 on Friday, mostly cloudy, partly cloudy Saturday, 67. So the weekend actually looks pretty good. Sunday is Groundhog Day, too, by the way. Uh, 75 Monday with a 20% chance of showers as well. Do you like to make some Punxsutawney fell predictions? No, I don't. I, you know how I feel about the groundhog. I don't trust the guy. He's never He's right. He's very suspicious. You don't like groundhogs playing meteorologist. Well, I mean, he is cute. I like I, I like him in that sense, but not as a meteorologist. Okay. Yeah. You don't trust him, huh? No. Right. I mean, he's not very credentialed either. <laughs> uh, 940, 947 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9, and we'll be right back. We both were committed to basketball. We were married to basketball. We were married to winning and playing the game the right way. And then every night that you came to the forum, because that's where you first started, mm -hmm. 
And then he was actually able to build Staples Center. And every night you came to Staples Center, you knew you were going to see something special, something great that you've never seen in your life. And that was Kobe Bryant. Good morning. Oh, hey, guys. Coming up on live, Antonio Banderas joins us. Yeah, he's going to talk about being Oscar nominated for his role in Pain and Glory. Mm. We'll see you then. Tomorrow on GMSA at 9, did you know that blood has an expiration date? It's National Blood Donor Month, and Alicia Barrera visited University Hospital to learn more about what happens to your blood after it's donated. A look inside the Blood Processing Center tomorrow at 9. Perfect timing for our KSAC Community Blood Drive. Reminder, it's going on all week. You can stop by University Hospital at any point to donate. Donor rooms open till 7 o'clock tonight. You can also stop at University Health Southwest Clinic, which is at 2121 Southwest 36th Street today, only today, between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. to donate. If you'd like more information, visit the community section on our website, which, of course, is KSAT.com. Transcode, good news, bad news, bad news. Heavy traffic, still 10 west at Dominion, but, uh, oh, oh, gosh, both directions there. Now I look at both sides of the screen. Way to go, Mark. Okay, yeah. And then we'll also look at uh, the other camera here. 35, I'm sorry, 10 approaching 35 has improved here in the downtown area. Those inbound or eastbound lanes at Frio were really stacking most of this hour. And we got sunny skies out there. Winds are still going to be a little bit breezy today. We're up around 65 for high, but clouds fill in tomorrow. It's cloudy. It's cooler. We'll also have a chance for some drizzle and showers tomorrow. So much different on your Thursday. You like Italy? I've never. Oh, well, we'll talk about this in a minute. I forgot we have Mr. Sears over here. Do we need to get the soapbox out of this? Morning? No, not today. I mean, we were hard on them after they lost to Chicago. Yes. But it's a new day. It's a new game. Tonight, they played the Utah Jazz in the uh, AT&T Center, 7.30. Home? So Field, we'll see. Home, at least. Yeah, they're, Proud. they're home. They got tonight and then Saturday against Charlotte, and then they go on their eight-game rodeo road trip all the way from home. Take, okay. Take the entire month of February, practically. Mm -hmm. If they lose tonight, oh. I'm going to ask you Let's not go there about yet. two key players okay. and what the Spurs should or should not Dude, do with I, these yeah, guys. I know what you're going to ask. And I have a feeling you know who the two guys are. So, February 6th is the trade can they Okay. Can they still get back into playoffs? Oh, yeah. They're two and a half games behind the team that's in the eighth place spot, which is Memphis. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they can still get back which in Which is there. where? Who? Memphis. Who? Or, I'm sorry, Memphis. Memphis. <laughs> like, I've never heard you say Memphis before. That was a first. That's weird. That's weird. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Memphis. We'll see how so, it goes tonight. The Jazz are kind of upset because they're coming off a huge loss at home. Mm -hmm. They played the Houston Rockets, and Houston didn't play any. Their people, they, James Harden didn't play. A couple and other they, guys ooh. didn't play, and they lost, so they might be a little mad. The Spurs should be pretty mad because they've lost three in a row that they should. They need to win. Mm -hmm. So, and if, when you think about it, the Spurs have won against teams that are some of the best in the yeah. league. They, yeah. they've won they against play. all the best in the East. They've won against some of the best in the West. So, they just, so we're going positive hey, today. They have the consistency of yoga. We're almost out of time, so I want to real quick get this. Um, if you're looking for a new house, Justin, this is the one you need. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, eight. Almost a 9,000 square foot Italian inspired mansion out near Bernie at 204 Rio Cordillera. It's a 17 acre hilltop mansion in Bernie. Gives you all the Italian vibes and sweeping views of the hill country. It only cost you $7.95 million. Four bedroom, four bath. Uh, let's see. Grand estate bursting with custom and imported Italian materials. We're everything from Tuscan terracotta tile to Venetian plaster. Mm -hmm. So if you've ever dreamed of 25 foot ceilings and a giant brick pizza oven, this might be Ooh. your dream home. Yeah, Thanks yeah, for being with us. Oven. There's a putting <laughs> green right there by the house. <laughs> let's go. Got everything. Do a viewing. Yeah. Or showing, or what do they call it? <laughs>